Hi, this is Jeff Georgianis, here to talk to you about jewelry tools for my friends at AutoFry. Today's video is the first in a series of awesome things you can do with the AutoFry Tag Micro Lathe 2. Tag Micro Lathe 2 is a high quality miniature lathe, but it's also one of the most affordable, which makes it be a winning combination. The AutoFry Tag Lathe comes two different ways. The first is fully assembled and ready to go. The second way is as a kit for you to assemble yourself. That way is a little less expensive. Uh, you'll need a little bit of electrical knowledge and, you know, screwing some parts together and assembling things, but nothing too complicated. Both versions come with a full accessory kit with everything you need to get started to use a precision micro lathe. If you want to take it a step further, you can add the machinist kit, which brings a min and milling attachment and a bunch of other items. Today we're going to show a simple and easy way to cut waxes for a band ring using the tag lathe. The tag lathe can accurately carve a wax like that in minutes, like way faster than you could ever do with a 3D printer. Here's what you need to do to make a band ring for lost wax casting using the Autofry tag lathe. So to do this, I'm going to cut about a two inch piece of old hacksaw blade using a separating disc. So I'm going to make two six millimeter bands. So I took my two inch piece of hacksaw blade and uh, went over to the bench grinder and I ground it down to six millimeters. Um, if, I, if you don't have a bench grinder, you can do it with a separating disc. It's just a little more, uh, well, awkward, but it works fine. I'm going to take my diamond burr and I'm going to grind the exact curve that I want my uh, ring shank to be. That looks pretty good. Next, from the back side, I'm going to take my diamond burr and I'm going to grind a 45 degree angle. To make a relief cut on the back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this three jaw chuck that comes with the kit. And I'm going to replace it with this really handy uh, wax rod holding jig <clears throat> that holds one and one sixteenth inch solid rods or wax tubes. I've cut a piece of wax that's about two inches long and I'm going to put this in there. Get some Allen wrenches or an, an Allen wrench and I'm going to tighten it into position. What's great about this versus the three jaw chuck is that it really holds the wax solidly and you don't have to worry about crushing it. I would advise you to play around with different speeds. <clears throat> Adjusting the speeds is really easy. You pull the motor back towards you. It's on a pivot and you can adjust the belt to uh, meet up with different um, ratios. Uh, the, what's going to make it go slower is to have it smaller on the back and bigger on the front and oppositely what's going to make it go faster is bigger on the back and smaller on the front. The speed that I like is kind of a medium speed on the slower side. As you can see though even though I cut off a smaller section the wax rod does still tend to wobble so the first thing I'm going to do is true it up and truing it up means cutting a little bit off at a time. You're going to get better cuts if you don't cut off too much at once. Okay, so now the wax, uh, solid wax rod is trued up and it's ready for the next step. After the wax is trued up, I'm going to drill a small hole in the center. I went online and looked up to see how much the diameter of a certain ring size was and divided it in half 
which gave me the radius. I take my dividers, put it in the little hole that I drilled, and mark the radius. Move the edge of my cutting tool right up to where it lines up with the mark. And I'm going to drill in uh, probably about an inch or so, and that'll give me uh, the perfect inside ring diameter. Right now my wax has a wall thickness of about four millimeters. I'm going to trim it down to three millimeters, so it's going to have a finish size of about two, two and a half millimeters. Okay, let's see how close I got it. That's perfect. I'm going to take the cutting tool that I've made and put it on top of another cutter. And that's going to give it a little bit of backbone uh, to help keep it more rigid. It's also going to line it up to where it's the perfect height to cut the wax. I line up the cutter with the wax as perfectly aligned as I possibly can. I'm going to cut the wax to my desired wall thickness. Now the wax is essentially done, uh, but I'm gonna take a little bit of citrus solvent uh, I could all, which dissolves wax, but it does it really slowly. And a little bit of t-shirt material. What's nice about the t-shirt material is that it's basically a lint-free cloth with a tiny bit of abrasive to it, which will polish the wax. I could also use a little bit of uh, commercial wax solvent that uh, jewelry supply houses like Auto Fry also sell. Okay, now the next step is going to be to cut it off and the wax will be done. I align the cutter right up to the edge of the wax, push it forward, and cut the wax off. One of the things that's really great about this technique is you can play around with different shapes on your cutting tool. You can also use the lathe to create a channel set band. It's super easy. Once you have your cutter made, you should be able to make a wax like this in 10 to 15 minutes. It's really easy and way faster than you can ever do with a 3D printer. I've had my tag lathe for about 15 years and it still works like it's brand new. If you're interested in a small precision lathe, it's a great choice. I hope you enjoyed this video on the TAG Microlathe 2. Cutting waxes is only one of a zillion different things that this incredible tool can do. If you like this video, please hit the like button below and don't forget to subscribe as well because I know you don't want to miss any of the AutoFry Tech Tip videos coming your way soon. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day.